Hello, 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 hello. Hi guys, hi guys. I think this is my first live video in this uh, group, church girl group, I think. So I just wanted to kind of run in here really, really quick to share because I want to start doing more lives and sharing more things with you guys. And hopefully uh, this group will grow. How are you? How are you doing? Just wait a few seconds, see if anyone um, um, jumps in. Let me see if I can share, invite a few people. How are you guys? It's raining and snowing here in New Jersey. Oh, let me see. This is not real. trying to invite a few people. Can you guys see my sign? It says love is all you need. How's everyone doing? I want to share. Hi, Marsha. How are you? Thanks for jumping on with me. I just wanted to jump in and share a few minutes. Um. So let's see if we can put share. this down. Just let it. Put Hi, it. Marcia. How okay. are you? Good. Thanks for jumping on with me. I just wanted to jump in and share a few minutes. Wait. Um. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so how are you, my dear? Where are you watching from? I'm in New Jersey. And it's raining and snowing here. And I'm a little bit sleepy. Oh, I'm going to try and take a nap after this. Okay, where's Danielle? I thought I... Oh, there she go. <laughs> Danielle, I was just about to tag you. Yeah, my tea's all gone. How are you guys? Doing, 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 doing. Danielle, are you finished eating? Did you finish your lunch? <laughs> I wanted to talk real quickly about how I manifested my husband. Um, I want to start... Hey, Danielle. <laughs> I wanted to start to share more in this group because... Um, I feel as if, as church women that want to get married, I just feel as if we're at a disadvantage. Yeah, lunch all gone. What did you have? <laughs> did I have lunch? Yeah, I ate on my way home. <laughs> and so I just wanted to share um, just a little bit with you guys because I want to see all of my sisters get married to good, healthy, prepared men who have prepared themselves to be husband. Not just a man who, um, because he's a man, you know. I was telling someone else that I remember when I was coming up in the church, it's as if as long as he's a man, that was enough 
And um, I was telling someone else. Uh, her name's not coming up. I wonder if that's the reason for so much divorce in our churches. Because there's so many forced marriages. Or marrying people. Oh, poor child. Asian style veggies and baked potato. Oh, sounds delicious. I'm vegetarian now. I think I told you. <laughs> um, forcing people to get married who who are not supposed to get married. You know, they talk about why is there so much divorce because there's so many forced marriages in the church. Oh, he's a nice guy. Oh, he's anointed. Oh, he's saved. And it takes more than one or two things that you have in common for marriage to work. Not because he is saved means he's the right guy for you. Or not because he's a nice guy means he's the nice he's the right guy for you. Or not because he's anointed means he's the right guy for you. And this is why my next book is so powerful talking about a prepared husband is because it really dives into different aspects of men. Um, what is he like? Um, you know, if he's not a tither and you're a tither, is that somebody you need to marry? You do understand that that's going to cause a lot of friction in your marriage because he doesn't believe in tithing. You do. So you're going to marry him knowing that he doesn't believe in tithing because in your mind you can convince him to tithe. No, that's going to be too much issue in your marriage. You know, if you're a, a believer and this person is not a believer, is that something you want to do? I mean, because you thought, oh, as long as we love, excuse me, as long as we love each other, it can work. No. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No, I can't. Oh, I know so and so. He was a Christian and she wasn't, and they've been married for 30 years. Okay, one or two people. You don't, but you don't know the in in and out of of all the things they're going through. You know, and I know a lot of a lot of women who who marry men knowing that they should not have married them. The reason why so many women have issues submitting to their husband is because you can't submit to him. If you submit to him, you're going to end up in the poorhouse. You're going to end up in the shelter. But you knew that ahead of time. You knew that before you married him, yet you still went ahead and married him. I'm not saying to anyone specifically on this live. I'm just speaking in general. So I, I would love for us to grow this group, invite your, your Christian sisters or any, um, anyone who, you know, is serious about getting married. Um, even though it says church girl, you know, cause I'm a church girl and I know the things that I went through and I know the things that my Christian sisters are going through. And I know about the forced marriages that they force themselves to get married and then it didn't work out. Because you don't have anything in common. You know. And so I wanted to talk about how I manifested my husband. Um, I have shared here before. That you need to write down the things you want in a husband. You know I know in the church we say. Oh as long as he's saved. And if God sent him. No. You need to be specific. You need to specifically write down. And, and then some people say. Well you know. God know what I want. God know we need to be saved too, but unless we ask him to come into our heart, he's not going to jump into our heart and save us. Okay? Write it down. And you're not, oh, well, when God, when God, God, and God don't need a list lies. Look at all the lists that God had in the Bible. Okay? And you're not making your list outside of God. My number one on my list was he had to be born again. So if a man came up to me who was not born again, there was a hi Coco. I was trying to tag you, girl. I don't know what happened. My list, my number one on my I tell ladies, have 10 things. 
quote, non-negotiably and, and, and negotiables. So that means there are some things you can negotiate that can go either way. And then there's some things that we're not going to negotiate. Thank you. For example, my number one in my list is a born again man. <clears throat> so if a Muslim man and they have come up to me talking about, oh, this is James, we need to get married. I like it. Let's go out. There is no need for me to waste my time to go out with someone who is not a born again Christian, a born again man, because my number one on my list is that he must be born again. And your list will help you to save you time. Not, you won't waste time. If you stick to your list, stick to it. Stop wasting time. If he's not born again, there's nothing we have to talk about. I'm not going to waste my time to go out and sit down and talk talk to you. No, I'm not. We don't have anything to, to talk about. You're wasting my time. You want to get saved? See my bishop. See my dad. My dad's a pastor. He can save you. Okay? I'm not the one to save you. I'm not the one to lead you to Jesus either. Because if you know you need to lead to Jesus, you could just go get led to Jesus on your own. You don't need me to lead you to Jesus. Okay? Those are some of the tricks people use. Guys have used. They tried that on me. But my number one was that he must be born again. So if any man came up to me who was not born again, we don't have anything to talk about. Okay, when I met my husband, we met at a networking event in a club. It's a restaurant that turns into a club or a lounge on Friday nights and they host different events. This night it was a networking event and I had my book. But, you know, we were talking and, oh, I find out that he went to Metropolitan. Oh, Metropolitan. Oh, nice. You know, we're sitting in our seat, dancing to the music. I'm trying to sell my book. I'm giving up my business cards. And somebody, and, you know, he was sitting there. My girlfriend, I brought my girlfriend with me. And, okay, oh, he goes to Metropolitan. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm listening. But not because he goes to church, ladies, mean he's born again. Okay, that's another thing we need to remember. It doesn't mean that he's born again. Okay, so number one, I knew he at least he went to church. So as the even, evening progressed, he said that he would call me and take me out. It took him a whole month, y'all, a whole month for him to call me and um, to take me out. And this is the part that I just don't understand why as Christian women, I can only talk about Christian women because I'm a Christian woman. So I know what I did until I got some sense. We meet one guy and we already put all of our hopes and dreams in his one little basket thinking he's the one he's going to marry us. And so, so he took a month, right? So what do you think a lot of women do in that month? Sit down and wait and pine and whine. And when is he going to call me or call him? I never called him. I never text him because my dad told me if he wants you, he will call you. He will come see about you. He will take you out. I never called him or never text him in that whole month. I waited but I wasn't just sitting at home waiting on him. I was out dating. I was out the next Friday night. I was out meeting people, going to different events, going to cultural events, going to a play, going to a Broadway play, going to the museum. Because I'm not because I met this one guy that said he was going to call and take me out. That doesn't mean he's the one. Neither should I just sit and waste a whole month waiting for him to take me out. And that's, a, that's what a lot of uh, women do. We meet one guy and we just sit and wait for him to call us and take us out as if he's the one. And we need to stop doing that. Dating is all about gathering information, gathering data about the guys we meet. Because you need the data you gather to make an informed decision. You can't meet one man and put all of your marital hopes and dreams in his one little flimsy full of whole baskets because you don't have enough data on this man to make a determination if he's the man for you. And that's what a lot of us do. And we need to stop that. Because in my book, and I've asked this on my page, if you met three guys in one week that want to take you out, who do you go out with? 
all the Christian women was like, well, the first guy I met and just forget about the other two. Because if I, if, if I, if I go out with the other two, then that's cheating. How is that cheating? You just met this guy. You don't know anything about him. You don't even know if he's saved. You don't know if he's a rapist. You don't know how many kids he have. You don't know anything about him. So how do you meet one guy and decide that he's it and just forget about the other three guys? Because if you go out with the other three guys, that's cheating. That is that is the fool, most foolish thing I have heard in all of my life. Just doesn't make any sense. And so we need to stop doing that, okay? If we go, we, we meet three guys, we go out with all three of them. When my husband called me, the picture he commented on was a picture that I was on a date. I, I, I had an event that day. And then later I went out and I took some pictures and I posted the pictures and I said something about my waistline. And he jumped on. You no, know, he jumped in my, my messages. And he said, your waistline is fine. And I was reading the messages the other day. I was like, oh, it's so romantic. And he was like, I, he, he said, I don't know how you're praying about your waistline, but all a brother can say is, amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, <laughs> I said, I was going to take those pictures and send it to him. You know, but in that month that he didn't call me, I wasn't sitting at home waiting and whining away and pining away and wondering why he didn't call me. He said he was going to call me. Oh, my God. He hasn't called me, but he... Stop. We have to stop that, ladies. We need to stop. Get up. Go out. Dress up. Be pretty. Go out on a date. Go at a nice restaurant. I've done that. I have gone to nice restaurants and sit and eat. I've even gone to chain restaurants where they have the 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 sports section and the guys are watching the, the game. I sat there ordered my lunch you know, it was lunch because I could only go out in the daytime sat right there and eat eat with the guys you never know you know some of us we need to reposition ourselves I now that I'm writing this book I'm thinking I didn't date guys I went to church with I didn't date guys I worked with and I didn't date guys I went to school with yet I was sitting in church all those years waiting for God to send my husband to the church to meet me Yet, all the way in the back of my mind, I didn't want to go out with anyone in the church. Because if it didn't work out, I didn't want to see them in my church. And sometimes we just need to reposition ourselves. And that's what I did. I re I, got, I, I was 34. I remember like it was yesterday. Okay, I was writing my book, finished writing my book. I was 34 and I, I was laying on my futon. And something said, girl, you 34. You ain't got no husband, no prospect. And it's like God spoke to me. It was like, get up, get out, get out, get up. I jumped up out of that bed so fast, got on my computer, started looking up events in my city. Oh, got that, did that. That's how I found that networking event. That's how I found that networking event. I said, was like, oh, I'm going to that. Called my other church, two church sisters. They didn't want to go. They thought it was worthy to go. They're still single today, almost eight years later. My coworker, uh, she was engaged. Uh, and um, I was like, hey, you want to go with me to this event? She was like, yeah, sure. She wanted to get out of the house. We went, boom, met my husband. Met my husband. Okay, because I repositioned myself. Now, what if I never win? And some people say, well, if it was God's will for y'all to meet, you would have met anyways. I do not believe that the will of God is automatically done. I believe we have to be led by the Spirit of the Lord. That's why the Lord spoke to me and said, get up and get out. Okay, what if I didn't get up and get out? What, what if I thought it was it was worldly for me to go to this networking event at a restaurant that turns into a lounge at on Friday nights. Okay. So we need to reposition ourselves, ladies. Okay. And my book, it's coming out soon talking about a, a prepared husband. I hope you guys get it. I hope you guys will read it. I hope you guys are open. You're online to meeting guys online on social media, 
And I met a few guys on social media. I've had guys to fly from Texas to come and see me in New Jersey. I've had four guys to get on planes, okay, to fly to Jersey to see me. There wasn't a love connection, but at least they got on the planes, okay? I had enough interest that they wanted to get on planes to fly here to meet me. Texas, one guy was from Texas, one guy was from Georgia, um... Another guy, he was from the Midwest. He was in the military. I don't really do military guys. And um, uh, another guy was, um, I don't remember where he was from, but I've had four guys to get on planes to fly to New Jersey to try to meet me. Guys that I met on social media right here on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. At the same time, I had one guy in New York, two trains, that claim he wanted to meet me and never got on the train to come and see me. Okay, he wanted me to get on the train and on the bus and come see him, which I, of course I declined because I do believe we have to allow men to pursue us. My dad taught me that. So if he wanted me, he would have gotten in a taxi cab. He had money. He worked in finances. He was a multi. He he wasn't a multi-millionaire, but he said he was a millionaire. Um, so to take a cab from New York to Jersey, less than a hundred dollars. But if he wanted to get on the train, it would have been two trains. Okay. He didn't, he, he was right here in New York. He didn't come see me. So that told me he was not interested. He wanted me to come over there and see him. He was at events and he was like, oh, I'm at this event. Why don't you just jump on the train? Come see me. No. Because see, before that, I had four guys to get on planes to fly across the country to come see me. I forgot to write that down. I need to write that down for my book. I didn't put that in my book. I'm going to add that. Okay, I had already had four guys to get on planes to fly all the way across the country to come and see me. So when Mr. New York didn't want to get on the train... To come see me right across the water he didn't know that I already had four guys to get on planes to come and see me to come meet me uh, I gotta add this in the book And it, it, the guys, it wasn't, it wasn't them. It was me. There wasn't like, I have to have chemistry. Okay. I have to have chemistry. If there's no chemistry, I, I just can't, you know, I had, I was interested. One guy was an engineer, young guy too, man. He had just bought a home. He didn't have, he didn't even have curtains up. <laughs> um, Um, he was an engineer. He came from, um, don't share this on my page because we're friends on Facebook. <laughs> we reconnected after I got married. He congratulated me. Um, he was an engineer and he was young. He, I, I think he was, he was a little bit too young for me because, you know, my daughter, you know, I want, I didn't want anybody too, too young, but there was no chemistry. The military guy, he was broke. He ain't had no money, child. I can't, he was trying to borrow money from me. You know, okay. We don't borrow money. Um, Mr. New York, he supposedly had money, but he didn't come see me. The other, the other guy from Texas, he was, I forget, this was years ago. I was in my 20s then. Um, I don't remember what he did. But he had, a, he had a good job. He had a good job. and Yeah. So, um, if a guy wants you, he'll come see about you. That's what daddy said. Never chase a man. Never run him down. And allow him to come and pursue you and see you. Okay. So... I just wanted to share that really quick because I think many of us were stuck in our churches and there's no one there other than the two drunk deacons. There's nobody there. 
We have to reposition ourselves, ladies. We have to get out of our environment. We have to change our environment. Think about Ruth. Ruth was in the field. Rebecca was at the well. Uh, Rachel was at the well. Where was Leah? At the house. That's why she ain't got no man. You know, she had to take Rachel's husband. Well, her daddy hooked it up. Reposition ourselves, okay? You don't have to go to church. Every time the doors of the church are open, you don't have to be there, okay? Because just look around in your churches, ladies, okay? What you see in your churches is, is your portion because <laughs> those you're doing the same thing those other sisters did, okay? They went to church every time the doors was open and never learned how to live outside of the church building. And, and that's why they're 50 and 60 and 70, still waiting for God to send their husband, now, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying you've been waiting all your life. He ain't doing it yet. You have to do something different. Okay? All right, ladies. I'm going to go because I need to take a nap. Oh, Lord, it's 430. I can't take a nap now. I have to go get the baby. Let's see. Uh, Daniel said, yep, my mom says she had a list of what she wanted in a man before she married my dad. They were married 34 years before he passed away and she was 35 years old. So she told me to make a little, yep. I was 35 years old when I got married. Amen. I met my husband when I was 34. He proposed to me on my 35th birthday. And October, he wanted us to get married in December, y'all know why, because I wasn't giving it up. But she was like, let's get married right away. I was like, no, okay, no. We're not getting married that quick because I, I got to find a dress. We have to plan a wedding, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so we got married the following May. Mine is coming this year. Amen, ladies. Claim it, claim it, claim it. But not only claim it, y'all. Please reposition yourself. Every week, you ladies need to do one thing outside of your comfort zone. Where's Miss Introvert? Danielle, Miss Introvert, I want you to stop going to, where you go, where you go, where you go, oh my God, every Friday night you go, Lord Jesus, don't tell me, I know. Mm. Okay, tell me, fine, tell me. <laughs> I'm with you on the back, oh God, he coming this year. Daddy, where you go Friday night? Oh my God, tell me, girl. Um, Every week, you ladies need to do at least one thing to out of out of your comfort zone because if you've been staying in your comfort zone and you have not met him it just means maybe you need to reposition yourself okay yes he's coming this year y'all i want to see you ladies married and married good husbands okay prepared husbands husband that can take care of you my father told me that the least, listen to this, he said, the least a husband should do, can do, is to put a roof over his wife's head and food on your table. That means if he can't put a roof over your head, Panera bread, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Danielle. No more Panera bread. You can't go this week, okay? You got to go somewhere else. <laughs> um, if he can't put a roof on over your head, and food on your table comfortably right, to make you comfortable. He ain't the one, boo. Okay? You understand? You don't want another mouth. Because you know what gets me? As women, as single moms, we're doing it. We are doing it. We're taking care of our kids. We're paying all the bills. We're putting food on our table. Our kids are not going without. But then you meet a man talk about, well, I can't afford to do all that. He's looking for somebody to take care of him. No, we're not going to do that. And I made a decision. I was 28 years old that I wrote that book. I need to release it. I made up my mind. Either I'm going to get what God has for me or I'm going to stay by myself. Because I just can't imagine being married to a man that is he can only contribute to the household. But I'm still supposed to submit to him. You're still the head. But you can't even put a roof over my head and food on my table? No. No way. And I wrote, I wrote in my book, 
Uh, I've been on even more. Well, yes, events to go to. Yes, ma'am. Go to museums and wear dresses, okay? Dresses. Take the pants off. <laughs> wear some dresses. Wear some skirts. Wear boots. Fishnet stockings. Guys like that. What do you think Michael complimented me on that night? I had on a dress that sat right on my knee, some tall ankle, tall boots that came up to my knees, and I had some fishnet stockings. And after we talk and talk, I was missing all the cues, y'all. He even said it the other day. He said, I guess you didn't flirt a lot because I was flirting with you all night. You wasn't paying me no attention. I was like, I was trying to sell my book. He leaned over. He said, you must have your mother's legs. I was like... What did you say? <laughs> and I got it. I got it. Once I got the the hint, I was like, yes, honey. Because mm -hmm. I was already listening what he did, where he worked at. He... Yes, Lexi? What did you It's something like Facebook. Um... He gave me his business card. Mm -hmm, Charles. It was on. But it still took him a month. But during that month, I was dating and going out. But once he took me out, he was on it. Halfway through, we went out the first day on a Monday night. Halfway through that day, he, he, he asked, I would love to have dinner with you again tomorrow night. Would you like to have dinner with me again tomorrow night? I told him no. You know, because... You know, you're not just going to come in my life and you're getting one date, then the next date. Uh, so I said no. So I went out with him Monday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, and Saturday morning, we went for a walk in the park because he was a little older than I was, and I wanted to make sure he could keep up. That's one of my, my number tens is help, physical health. That's one of my number tens, and I wanted to make sure this older guy could keep up with this girl that used to run track. He sure kept up. He kept up, honey. He kept up. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'll, fine, I'll do some dress. Yes, dear. Dresses and skirts, guys like that. Go find with colors, okay? Try colors. No black, no blue. Um, try bright colors, okay? Um, you've seen some of the dresses I've worn. They're bright, bright colors. Colors. Guys, guys are colorblind. That's what they say. <laughs> They're colorblind. We're bright. Something bright that will catch their attention. Okay. All right, ladies. I'm going to have to run because I have to go get my baby. I'm going to just go out and get him right now. Because it's like 440. All right. So I'm going to try to do more lives, um, you know, so we can talk. And I want to share more. And um, I can't wait for my book to come out so you guys can read more about how to gather information on the guys that you meet. You know, how to listen, how to tune your ears. My number two is tithing. And I remember about a week or two after he took me out, he had to fly out of town because he travels sometimes for work. And I remember him saying, um, he called me early that morning, Sunday morning, I remember. And he said, um, I, I'm, I'm going to run to the church to drop my tides off and I would love to come by and get a hug. Ding, ding, ding. Tithing is my number two. Okay, tithing is my number two, ladies. So, born again, he's born again. Number two, then, okay, born again. So then the health part is like all the way over here. Okay, so physically he could keep up with me. My number two is tithing. So you see how you have to kind of tune your ears and you don't really have to ask, you know, so... um. You don't have, some of the questions you don't have to come out and ask. You could just listen, know what kind of questions to ask, know what kind of conversations to have, so they'll say it. So let's say if I met him, he's a wonderful guy, he's sweet, but he says, tithing, man, pastor spent all our money buying him a new uh, a truck and some gator shoes. Mm. 
You don't have to say nothing. You don't need to argue with him. You don't need to fight with him about tithing. You don't need to try to prove that he should tithe or he shouldn't tithe. You don't have to pull your Bible out. You just listen. You already know. Well, he don't believe in tithing. You get married. It's going to be a fight every Sunday to tithe and to give. So you either walk away or be ready to fight in your marriage. And some people don't walk away. Some people will try to, some woman will try to change his mind. Never try to change a man's mind. Okay, it is what it is. If he don't believe in tithing, you do. That's not somebody you want to marry. Okay, I just wrote in the book, me and my husband, we have never had a fight about money. Never. We're going to be married six years this May. Never had a fight about money. You know why? I chose a prepared man that was prepared to provide. And he's a tither. We don't have any fight about church. The only discussion we have on Sunday morning is what service you want to go to. 7 o'clock. 9 o'clock or 11.30. Okay? When it comes to tithing, more, the most I'll say is, Mike, did you did you um, send the tithe check in? Okay, if we're not going to church, can you go online and pay your tithing? Okay. Never had a fight. When it comes to giving, we don't... It's okay. Christmas, Pastor asks for us to donate tithe, uh, toys. Mike says, uh, babe, I'm going to go to wherever. I'm going to buy $200 worth of toys for the church. Okay. Never had a fight. Never. Because while I was dating, I was watching him. I was paying attention. Is he kind? Is he thoughtful? He said to me when we got married, he said, you know, one of the reasons why I chose you was I watch how you were with your money and I knew that you didn't waste your money. You didn't waste your money. So I knew that you would not waste my money. See that? So they're paying attention and they're watching. Okay. He told me that he said, I knew you didn't waste your money. So I knew you wasn't, you wouldn't waste mine. Mm, okay. So just be mindful as you date ladies, as you're watching them, they're watching you. All right. I have to go. If you have any questions, just drop it and I'll answer it when I get back home. I love you guys. I'm going to try to do more live. And um, I can't wait for my book to come out. Oh, my Lord. I really can't wait. It is so, so good about the guys you meet and how to pay attention and how to listen to what they say. You know, let's say you meet a guy and I'm going because it's, it's 440. I get him at, by 530, but I don't like to get him late. Let's say you meet a guy and he says, um, you know what? Marriage is just a piece of paper. Okay. You don't even have to say nothing. Finish your food and let that be it. Don't try to convince him that marriage is more than just a piece of paper. Don't try to convince him to marry you. Don't try to convince him otherwise because you're trying to change his mind. And your life will be miserable. And you don't want to have a, a miserable marriage. A lot of people are miserable in their marriages because they overlook red flags. And they try, women try to change men. Don't. You either have to marry him the way he is or just leave him and move on. That's why you can't marry a man that ain't got no job. Why should he go get one? You married him without a job. You paid for the wedding and you bought the house. Why should he go buy a house? Why should he go get a job? You can pay it all. You can provide. You know, don't ever do that. All right, guys. I love you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. The book has so much more stories, but I'm going to try to do more live videos for you ladies. I love you guys. Take care. Any questions, you could just leave it for me. And I'll hit you back when I get home. Yeah. What's uh Coco? What's what's wild? What's wild? Let me go get my boots while you're answering that question. Mm. Mm. I'm get my rain boots. Uh keep trying to tell your friend what, uh Coco.
<clears throat> Y'all, look at these yellow um, rain boots. Do you know how many guys come up to me in stores and compliment me on these boots? <laughs> I just say, I'm sorry, I'm married. <laughs> Because they're colorblind. They can't see. So when they see a bright color, it draws them. It draws them. Okay? That's why you got to stop wearing dull gray colors. Wear bright colors. <laughs> so it could draw them. Uh, my girlfriend has the house, job, and car. And she wants to marry a man fresh out, fresh out of jail. Please, child, please. Add her to this group, boo-boo. How many women you know do that? Just just so desperate. You can't be married no man fresh out of jail. <clears throat> fresh out of jail. Oh, child, she's so silly. She will fight all of us. <laughs> Mm -mm. I don't do jailbirds, period. You know, if he stole a car when he was 12 and have been on the straight and narrow since, then I can see. But continually, those are uh, what I call uh, revolving door criminals. No, ma'am. Can't do it. Cannot do it. Shall not, will not, won't not. LOL, I don't say much, but he has no incentive to do better because she has it she's provided everything she's being the man she's being the man exactly why should he go work oh, that's my 445 pick up the baby alarm <laughs> right why should he go work He has no reason. It's a, it's a whole TV show about the love after lock of one woman. His hubby went back to jail. Never in my life. Nope. He's not going to work. No, he shouldn't work. He he don't have any reason to go to work. Um, Coco, he don't have none. Yeah, um, Danielle, girl, I can't watch that show. It upset my spirit. I don't do jail. Nope, me either. I don't do jailbirds. Now, like I say, if he was like 12 when he stole the car. <laughs> if he was 12 when he stole the car <laughs> and he's been on the straight and narrow since, then maybe I could see. <laughs> but the revolving door criminal, nope, can't do it. Can't do it. Will not do it. You know. And a lot of these, a lot of these churches, the people in the church, they want you, they want you to, to get with these jailbirds. I left one church because one lady said, Sister Janice, could you go pick, go pick up my son for me for church? I was like, sure, mother, so and so. So um, came to church, dropped him off. And um, he called me in the week. We were talking. That man had just came out of jail Friday. Church wants you to marry anybody. Exactly. He had just got out of jail. And I was like... I don't remember what he was in jail for. I was so upset. Because I was like... It's just me and my baby. My baby girl. And you have me to go pick some man up fresh out of jail? I left the church after that. I left the church because the because they they started to they wanted to push him on me. Oh, he's a nice guy. He you know he need a good woman to get him on the straight and narrow. Not this woman. No, nope, can't be me. Sorry, I left that church after that. I never went back. Church tell you to clean him up. Nope. That's God's job and his mother. If his mother didn't clean him up and God can't clean him, clean, I can't help it. 
Okay. All right, ladies. I'm going to go because I got to go pick up my baby. But we'll talk. We will talk. Um, today's, today's Tuesday. Um, I don't know when, but soon. All right, ladies. I have to go. I love you. Thank you guys for watching. Any questions or comments, just leave it and I'll get it when I get back. Okay. I just spent some time on my book. See, I cooked yesterday. I cooked two meals yesterday. So I don't have to cook today. All right. Love you guys. Bye.